Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my Bracketology 9.0 release. Possibly my last Bracketology video of the year. I don't know if I'm going to do one tomorrow. It might not really make sense considering, not that we're fully set, but we do have a lot of the matchups. We know a lot of the teams that are probably going to be in the tournament. And we will go through the bracket matrix here. So you can see the three consensus one seeds. We all know Purdue, UConn, and Houston. The way I look at it, UConn and Houston, I am considering picking to be my national champion with Houston being my 1A team right now. Just feels like it's their time. Maybe they're too obvious and they'll end up losing, but I think both UConn and Houston are going to go very deep. And then it does seem like North Carolina will be that final one seed with the situation surrounding Tennessee losing in the SEC championship, Arizona, same thing to Oregon. We do have very likely our four one seeds with North Carolina continuing on in the ACC tournament. They will be an interesting team to watch as well. Tennessee and Arizona both uh, will be staying on the two line. I do have question marks about both those teams. I'm guessing they make the Sweet 16. I'm not sure though if I'm going to have them going any further than that. Marquette and then Iowa State as well. Both Marquette and Iowa State are in their conference championship games. We're going to go through all the major conference championship games uh, or the like the tournament brackets as well here on this Saturday morning. Baylor, Creighton, Duke, and Kentucky all on the three line. How about Kentucky losing to Texas A&M? That Kentucky team is so scary to pick. They're so inconsistent. Terrible defense. The four line, Kansas, Illinois. Illinois beating Ohio State. A tough loss for the Buckeyes. But the Illini get it done. They advance to the semifinal in the Big Ten. Alabama, they lost to Florida. Terrible defense. Auburn, also a four seed. Auburn is loved analytically. If you look at the analytics, there really are right now about four teams that can win the national title. It would be UConn, Houston, North Carolina. Oh, also Tennessee and Arizona. And then, believe it or not, Auburn, a four seed who is loved. The five line, BYU, South Carolina, San Diego State, and Texas Tech. Texas Tech vaulting up. They got thrashed, though, yesterday by Houston. It was a close game in the first half, but they couldn't score in the second half. Houston just has suffocating defense. The six line, Utah State, Wisconsin, St. Mary's, and Clemson. I do like St. Mary's possibly to go to at least the Sweet 16. I just feel like it's their year to finally do something. Not anything crazy. Maybe the Sweet 16, maybe the Elite Eight, nothing more. We will see. The seven line, it's going to be, a, we're going to get into a bunch of Mountain West teams, I'm sure. Nevada, Washington State, Gonzaga, and Florida. So I wonder if Florida moves up to maybe a six after beating Alabama. Maybe they win the SEC, they move up to the top of the six line, or maybe even the five line. Dayton down to an eight. They have had a terrible second half of the year, and it continued in their conference tournament. They're already knocked out. Boise State, Texas, and Colorado State. The nine line is Northwestern, Nebraska, FAU, and TCU. The 10 line is MSU, Oklahoma. Oklahoma has really taken on water recently. They're starting to like creep. I still think they're going to make the tournament because they started the year like 11 and 1. But yeah, Oklahoma is on their last legs. I'm guessing they lose in the first round. Mississippi State and then St. John's. Yeah, Mississippi State for sure is going to be in after their SEC tournament run. St. John's now. They move to a 10 seed possibly, not involved in the first four, even with that record because their analytics are so good. Colorado should definitely be, and I hope Colorado does not have to play in the first four because with their guard play, they might be a Sweet 16 type team. Virginia, that's a team I'm really not interested in seeing, but listen, if they make it, they make it. They do have a good record, although the ACC is not a great conference. Seton Hall is kind of just another average team. Drake, New Mexico possibly in now, and then Princeton listed as an 11 seed. Uh, the, interesting to see an Ivy League team and all the way up to an 11. James Madison, Grand Canyon, South Florida, Virginia Commonwealth. I don't know what happened to the A-10. I'm going to go over it. It's crazy. All the top four seeds are already out. The 13 line is McNeese, Sanford, Vermont, and Charleston. We'll see with Vermont. I believe they play today against UMass Lowell. I'm guessing they win that game and they lock up a 13 seed. They're a team I'm interested in. When it comes to that 13 line, I'm not picking Charleston. I'm probably not picking Samford. I guess it depends who they face. But possibly McNeese or Vermont for an upset over a four. 
the 14 line, Akron, Oakland, Moorhead State, UC Davis out of the Big West now. I'm guessing Long Beach State actually beats UC Davis, but it is what it is. The 15 line, Western Kentucky now predicted out of the Conference USA. Colgate, South Dakota State, and then Fairfield, Quinnipiac lost a close game yesterday, so they're done in the Metro Atlantic. And then the 16 seeds are just Longwood, Montana State, Stetson, uh, Wagner, Rambling, and Howard with the teams fully on the bubble, Texas A&M. Going to be very interesting with them beating Kentucky. Can they continue it? They've got Indiana State out of the tournaments. Uh, certainly, I would like to see Indiana State in over a team like Virginia, Providence, Pittsburgh, even though they've had a nice run in the ACC, Kansas State, Villanova. Villanova's got to be out, man. Villanova is like 18 and 15. They're three games above 500, and they almost lost to DePaul in their conference tournament. You just can't get in. And then Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio State, with under Chris Holtman, they were just so bad. Jake Diebler tries to turn it around. They're definitely good enough with Jake Diebler to be a tournament team, but the committee is obviously going to factor in the fact that under Holtman, they were really bad. This is the overall bubble. This is sorted by net rankings, which is kind of annoying. I really don't think net rankings are all that good, honestly. I know it's just an analytical data point, but... New Mexico very likely in, Michigan State very likely in. How about Indiana State first four out? I mean, it just comes down to what they value with Indiana State. Their strength of schedule is terrible. They have one quad one win overall. I mean, I guess Michigan State only has three. Colorado State has seven. Wow. Yeah, Colorado State's certainly going to be in this tournament. You would also expect St. John's to be in. Cincinnati very likely out of this tournament. 38 in terms of net. Villanova's going to be out. Pittsburgh's right on the bubble. We'll see. Mississippi State's going to be in. TCU's going to be in. Although, I could do without TCU personally. It's nothing against them. I just don't find them to be very interesting. Same thing with Oklahoma, but Oklahoma's also going to make it. Those are two teams I think are going to lose very early in the first round. Wake Forest is going to be out. I mean, they've had decent analytics all year, but after they beat Duke, they really just tailed off. You do have a Texas A&M. They're in the first four out, but they can build on their resume. Virginia needs to be out. Here they're listed as an 11 seed. Come on. Utah is going to be out. Northwestern's going to be in probably in an 8v9 game. Ohio State, I mean, we'll see. They're probably going to be out. Just analytically, they're not, you know, they're not there with the net rating. Again, it's a situation where they fire their coach. They get better, but unfortunately... The early part of the season has to be taken into account. Another team I could do without is Seton Hall. I mean, you can see their analytics are just terrible. So that may, honestly, if I could have, you know, when it comes to the bubble, I would want to see St. John's in the tournament. I would want to see Indiana State in the tournament. I would want to see a team like Texas A&M in the tournament. I'm guessing they'll make it. Maybe Ohio State in the tournament. Teams like that. That would be my preference when it comes to that. And then updating the conference tournaments, the ACC, it is North Carolina taking on NC State. So can NC State possibly steal a bid winning this game? They're only like 20 and 14 in a bad ACC. So certainly they're not going to get in the tournament as an at-large. I don't think they're going to beat North Carolina. I'm guessing North Carolina wins. They beat Pittsburgh. You did have Virginia lose to NC State. That game did go to overtime. Uh, the big upset there, though, was NC State over Duke by five. But that is just the matchup in that one. The A-10, it's pretty crazy. Richmond loses. <laughs> Rest in peace to Richmond, right? They lose to St. Joseph's in the first round as a one seed in their tournament, the Spiders. And they'll take on VCU. I really just hope VCU doesn't get in. It feels like VCU always makes the tournament. Personally, I hope uh, Duquesne wins the sixth seed just because it's so random. They did beat Dayton, the three seed. Loyola Chicago also lost in double overtime to St. Bonaventure. So, I mean, we'll see what ends up happening there. A lot of upsets. The Big East, it is UConn taking on Marquette, one verse three. You did have uh, UConn beating St. John's only by five, though. St. John's is going into the tournament possibly as a 10 seed. Very good in terms of analytics. I could see St. John's going on a very nice Rick Patino style Sweet 16, maybe Elite Eight run, especially if they don't have, if they're not involved in that first four, and that's a very quality loss against an amazing UConn team. I think UConn they got to be like a Final Four type team at this point. Marquette, I'm still not a big fan of Marquette. You look at their tournament run; it it took them overtime to beat Vir uh, Villanova. 
And then they beat Providence. Uh, I, I don't know about Marquette. You know, I, I could see them losing early as a two seed. Moving on to the Big Ten, it is Purdue-Wisconsin. That's a 1v5 game. So that's a good win for Wisconsin over Northwestern by nine points. Purdue kind of, uh, you know, they, they beat MSU by five. A lot of us are kind of fading Purdue right now. Illinois beats Ohio State by three. If Ohio State would have won that game, I think they would have been in the tournament. And, I mean, this is that bracket is wide open for Illinois. I think Nebraska is, you know, e almost at this point easier to beat than Ohio State. Even though, to, to be fair, Nebraska's had a very nice year and they did crush Indiana by almost 30 points there in the third round of the Big Ten Conference Tournament. Moving on to the Big 12 it is Houston taking on Iowa State, 1v2, so no upset there. And look at the the, the semifinal matchups as well. They were uh, 1v4 and 2v3, so I would expect Houston to very easily beat Iowa State, probably in a low-scoring game. Houston looks like a powerhouse right now. Moving on to the Big West, you've got more upsets. It is UC Davis who beat Hawaii, and then Long Beach State who beat UC Irvine. The big thing here, we all thought UC Irvine was going to win this conference and get the auto bid, but they're already knocked out. So I think Long Beach State possibly could beat UC Davis. Moving on to Conference USA, Sam Houston, the one seed, got upset there in the third round against UTEP. Now it's UTEP versus Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky annihilated Middle Tennessee 85-54. to And I would expect Western Kentucky there. Out of that conference, the Metro Atlantic, it is Fairfield versus St. Peter's. St. Peter's beating Quinnipiac. So Quinnipiac, the one seed already eliminated. I would expect Fairfield to win this conference tournament. Moving on to the MAC, you did have, I thought Ohio was actually going to win this tournament after the one seed Toledo lost in the first round, but then Ohio lost to Akron, the two seed, by three points. And now it's Akron taking on Ken State, the Cinderella eight seed, who beat Bowling Green. Certainly, you would expect Akron to win this game, but we'll see. Moving on to the Mountain West, it is the five seed versus the six seed. So, good for New Mexico. They needed a run like this to get in. They did it. They beat Colorado State by 13, and now they should be very easily in the tournament, and they can possibly beat San Diego State. The Mountain West is just a complete mosh pit. I, you know, I don't have faith in any of these teams making the Sweet 16. One of them might, but to me... These are all, you know, above average teams, but there's no real great teams. Moving on to the Pac-12, Oregon, you know, squarely trying to steal a bid here as a four seed, beating Arizona by eight. It is a bit of a red flag for Arizona. I don't want to overreact to it. You know, I guess we'll see what happens. And then you did have Colorado beating Washington State. Very low scoring game. I think Colorado ends up winning this. But if Oregon wins, that's, that's going to steal someone's spot on the bubble. Moving on to the SEC, it is Mississippi State taking on Auburn. I'm guessing Auburn is going to win this tournament just looking at this. I mean, you could make the argument for either Florida or Texas A&M because both of them are really hot. Texas A&M just scored 97 points. Florida just scored 102. Florida has that crazy high upside. Kentucky and Bama both lose immediately. And then you also did have Tennessee losing immediately as well. So... Tennessee losing, you know, scoring 56 points, it, it, it's a very big red flag. And they're going to be a two seed. I, I, I would tread with caution right now with Tennessee. I know I liked Tennessee a few weeks ago, but Tennessee does not have great depth. So we will see. This is the updated Lenardi bubble. It's got TCU in. Uh, these are the teams with buys, so they're not going to be in the first four. TCU, Michigan State, A&M, and Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean, TCU and Oklahoma keep falling back, but I'm guessing they're still going to be in. Uh, St. John's, Colorado, Seton Hall, and New Mexico, the last four in. The first four out, Virginia, Indiana State, Pittsburgh, and Providence. And the next four out, uh, it is Kansas State, Wake Forest, Ohio State, and Villanova. So those next four out teams, they've got, they're very unlikely to be in the tournament just looking at this. You know, if you're in next four out right now and you've already been eliminated from your conference tournament, that those are very likely NIT teams. Moving on to the updated bracket, you can see Purdue, the Midwest region, they get matched up. You can see South Carolina, the five seed, Princeton, the 12. There's a possible upset right there. Uh, Texas Tech up to a six seed, James Madison. That's not a fun matchup for Texas Tech. You wouldn't want that one. And then at the bottom, Tennessee taking on Longwood. I can already see the people peaking Michigan State to beat Tennessee in the second round, and I wouldn't hate it. I mean, Michigan State did look decent against Purdue. They only lost by five points. Looking at the South, you've got Houston as the number one seed. You would think Houston would run through this region, honestly. Oh, they do get Auburn. 
Yeah, if I was Houston, I would not want Auburn. Just analytically, Auburn is a very good team. They tend to lose to any really good team they face. And then also Florida is in that region as well as Illinois. That is not a... I, I don't think that this, this bracket is balanced very well. You've got Florida, Illinois, Auburn, and Houston. I would argue the best one seed, the best four seed, the best six seed, the best... Oh, well, they did move Illinois up to a three seed then. But I still think Illinois is a really good team. They did beat Ohio State by only three, but Marquette a two seed. I think Marquette would get eaten alive with a bracket like that. And then moving on to the West, it is North Carolina. This is their region. They've got a very, well, yeah, they've got a very nice draw. I mean, I can't say Alabama's this great team. They, they just don't have a good enough defense, man. There's no way they're going to go far into the tournament. They might win a few games, but you just can't trust them. BYU is a five seed. St. Mary's is a six seed. Arizona in that bottom region. Uh, so that is that draw. And then the East, it is UConn. They get Wisconsin as a five seed, South Florida as a 12. That's a typical upset. Although Wisconsin's playing better. Wisconsin is playing better. Duke as a four. I'm a little bit higher on Duke than most people. I think they're going to have a decent run. A lot of people are going to think they're going to lose early because of the way they ended the season. I guess we'll see. They've got Duke and Kentucky there. Kentucky the three seed. Yeah, Kentucky's another one. They just have no defense. Clemson a seven seed. Iowa State a two seed. That could get real interesting there in that bottom quadrant. You could get a, a crazy Cinderella like St. John's coming out of that Pittsburgh, like that bottom area and possibly facing UConn. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this Bracketology update. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.